Good evening. Uganda's capital city, Kampala, is grappling with bad roads, daily traffic gridlock, lack of an efficient public transport system, and commuters with a high degree of impunity. Kampala's elected leaders are in perpetual conflict with their appointed public servants. Despite all these setbacks, KCCA is talking of giving Kampala residents a smart city that works for all. To look into the chronic challenges for Kampala and the promised ray of hope, I have the city ex deputy executive director, engineer David Saleh Mbazi, and Godba Tumushabe, policy analyst and associate director at the Great Lakes Institute for Strategic Studies. Gentlemen, thank you so much for having honored our invitation. A warm welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Godbury, you are a lawyer by training. We have a, an engineer. Let me begin with you, uh, Engineer David, because you have a big mandate. The city is basically in your hands. You are the man we have to look up to to ensure that the city Kampala is running for us. One thing that is very evident, even when I was driving here from Namuongo to Kampala, to the, to the city center, the pathetic potholes, you know, that have become death traps. I can imagine perhaps maybe you want to rework those roads. But if the money is not there to redo the roads, really, there should be some money to maintain. What's going on? <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, okay, you've spoken to the issue. The issue is resource constraints. We're hamstrung. And it's not just cases here. The entire nation is hamstrung. The current economic situations are not good. The tax collections are low. In any case, our budgets have been cut further. Uh, last year we had a budget of 470 billion, now we have a budget of 420 billion. So the, the challenges are even more. You're talking about the poor roads. Roads are designed to have a life of about 15 to 20 years. Our is about have an age of about 45 to 50 years. They're at the point where they've actually given up. We have to re rehabilitate them. It requires resources to do that. If you look at uh, the flooding situation in the city, you need to line these drains to ensure that they're not earth drains. You need a budget of about $20 million to do that. We don't yet have those resources <coughs> in the current circumstances. Come to garbage. Garbage is another issue that we deal with. We generate uh, about 2,500 tons of garbage every day. We're only able to collect about 50% of it. Wow. Now, with the current budget challenges we have, we may collect much less of it. Now, that's going to create another issue. It has a public health <laughs> Just wait a minute, because <laughs> it looks like <laughs> even you, you seem to be organizing with the rest of us. But your job is actually to organize the Kampala. Engineer Luyimbas, you are telling us that the city is broke. The city does not have sufficient money to deliver the services that are desired for the public to be happy at the moment. That's a, that's a fact. Those roads, to rehabilitate them, you need money. You can't, you can't laugh and have when, the roads... When, when, the, the deputy, when the executive director was in this chair a couple of months back, yeah. actually, she seemed to have said the roads, for example, of uh, 8th Street, 6th Street, and, and, and 7th Street, that you actually had even signed a contract to work on those roads. Yeah. Now, we've, well, si we've signed contracts well, for about 69 kilometers, about... 360 kilometers. But, but these contracts, Engineer Luyimbazi, were signed about six, eight months ago. No, 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 three months ago. It is three months ago. It was in November. It was in November. That one I know for sure. But now we're only dealing with about 70 kilometers of roads, it, of paved roads. November, in we have, we're November, December, and now we are entering April. Yes. So we're, we're, that, what I'm saying is right. No, there is a time period a contractor has to mobilize. He, because all these are foreign contractors. They have to establish, um, import the equipment, establish site, and be ready to work. That takes time. And right now they're doing forward maintenance in order to make the roads more There's no maintenance. <laughs> what should I say? The thing is one. I don't know. The roads, <laughs> the roads for which we signed contracts are only 69 kilometers. The city has 69 kilometers of paved roads. We have 650 kilometers of paved roads in the city, of which 360 are non dysfunctional. They've exceeded their service lives. They need to be rehabilitated. So even if we do the 70 kilometers, you'll still find portals in the city because we need resources to rehabilitate the remaining 280 kilometers. So the challenge is there are many roads that need to be rehabilitated or reconstructed. Yes, we're doing some of them, but not the entire lot. So just because we signed off contracts for 70 kilometers, that doesn't mean the city is going to be rid, rid of portals. 
you're actually softening the blow. I thought <laughs> you're telling us what is coming. It's just giving you the bad news. <laughs> but you, you know, the bad news. <laughs> the bad news but yeah. you, you, you had a budget of 470 billion and you got 420 billion, right? Yeah. But okay, that's what they're they supposed to give you. But actually, what is the real money they're giving you? Because that could be on the paper 420, but is that the money? Because if okay. 420 billion is what you're supposed to get, maybe we could say you have something to run, to, to, to okay. work with. The real money we have to use for providing services is about 220, because about 200 goes to wage and non-wage bill. So 125 billion goes towards paying s salaries and 75 for running the institution. Then we remain the 220 to divide amongst running schools, running markets, uh, health centers, health centers mm -hmm. mention it including rehabilitating roads. So how much money do you have for the roads? For the roads, we have, a, from the government, we have a budget of about 78 billion. But next financial aid is going to be even tighter because we have a budget of only 10 billion available for road rehabilitation. So, of course, but this, this, this situation... Uh, have you seen that uh, WhatsApp emoji when somebody does like this? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me ask you to pause there. Uh, Godbra, you're a policy analyst. Mm. You're a resident of Kampala. You're a, yeah. you're, a, you're a teacher at the School of Law and you're a passionate Ugandan. What do you make of this? No, actually, first of all, I, I have a lot of sympathies for people like David and, and their team. Because these are technical people, very accomplished professionals, and they are asked to do a job, and they are not given the resources to do that job. And I even worry for their careers, by the way. Because if you are an engineer accomplished as David and the old the people that I know in KCC and other places, and then you are the deputy CEO of the city, and this is the city, you know, it, it also affects your own professionalism as a career engineer. So I, I, I really sympathize with these guys. Is that sympathy qualified? Yeah. Yeah. So I sympathize. Is that qualified sympathy? <laughs> I don't uh, want to comment. <laughs> <laughs> secondly, secondly, the question of road network, you, you see, the, there is no country that has transformed without a functioning road network. In, in fact, as early as 2006, when we were really, I, I was deeply involved in, uh, in, uh, in uh, you know, shaping public policy in the area of economic and budget. That, that's the time when I did some analytical work with Andrew Mwenda, my colleague. And we argued then and said, this country, for it to be able to move, we must move resources into the roads infrastructure to be able to move things, move goods, move services. In fact, after that uh, study that we did, we organized a, a, a conference at, at uh, the current Grand Imperial Hotel, where we had, at that time, uh, Dr. Sruma was minister. He really graced us with the convening all the senior people, all the, the whole of Ministry of Finance was there and we presented the, the data that showed that for us to be able to move, if, if, if the country needed to move, we had to put money in roads. But, and from but that maybe time, they listened because the yeah, roads no, outside Kampala have been worked on. Incidentally, <laughs> they listened. The budget for, tr for roads kept on increasing from 2007. It kept on increasing. Uh, up to, uh, I think at this moment, uh, the, the, the transport ministry probably has, I think, the second or the third highest budget of the national resources. The trouble that we have right now, I think, is uh, it's, it's actually, I think it's more of a political problem than a policy problem. Because you see, I don't see, I don't see how you can even have a president who can, uh, who can accept that Kampara can be this current state of affairs. That, that for me is a huge indictment on you, whoever is president of, the, of this country, that you can afford to have this city in its current form. And then you can flex muscles and move around and talk about so many things. And this city is like this. So at the point where we are, because uh, look at it this way, that this country, is not short of resources to do roads in Kampala. Uh, UNRWA does roads across this country. Of course, they have their own problems. I was in Ntungamu the other day and, and looked at the garries 
in one of those roads from Kahunga through Nyachera, Rukoni, to Rukoni, the gullies. And you, you imagine the people who are passing there and you, you are thinking of pregnant mothers going to deliver and they are being carried on motor, on motor, on uh, border borders. Eh? And you ask yourself, how do they manage? But the point I want to make is that UNRWA has roads. These are roads across the country. If this country, if this government was serious, they would even sacrifice maybe one road, one of the major highways. The money that goes into one road, which could be some... 200 kilometers or, yeah, or absolutely. more. Yeah, absolutely. They could just sacrifice one and say, the roads in this town have to be fixed. In fact, I would even argue and say, a serious president in this country would need to decree that roads of in a 30 radius of this city must be working properly. If you can do that, I mean, you can come and tell stories about transformation and whatever. You are basically being unserious. Okay. Because they, the whole economy is locked up in this metropolitan area. Mr. Deputy Executive Director, Engineer Luyimbazi, I can imagine your, most of the time on the plane traveling the globe and mm -hmm. maybe going to benchmark, maybe in meetings, workshops, and trainings around the world. And I'm sure when you get back on the plane and you fly to Entebbe and back to the city which you manage, <laughs> what goes in your head? <laughs> what do you think? I don't fly, you're I don't fly on that. No, I'm not being noted <laughs> because I just want to make it so yeah, that I, 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 I don't fly on the way you say. Yeah. Okay, the thing is one, uh, the challenges <laughs> the city face, faces are real. They're resource related. But that, is mean, that, that, that doesn't mean there's no hope. There is hope. Only problem the hope we have is going to take some time. What is some time? Uh, we're looking at about two to three years minimum to fix this problem. Aye. Uh, because <laughs> you put your hands on your head. To put uh, it. <laughs> we, we have uh, uh. We've secured a World Bank loan of about $650 million to again revamp roads in the greater Kampala metropolitan area. Kisi may get about 250 kilometers. We may be able to fix about a hundred kilometers of roads using that money. We have uh, a company. F so the World Bank loan is not enough to fix the roads in Kampala? It's not enough. We have, remember we have 2,100 kilometers of roads, of which 650 are paved. Of the, three, of the 650, three, 360 are dead. They need revamping. And even the gravel part of the network needs to be tarmacked. You cannot have gravel roads in the city. So there's a lot of work in terms of, when we're talking about the smart city, we are mm -hmm. meaning getting rid of mud and dust. You know, <laughs> being able to have a city you're proud of. Mm -hmm. Now, so you need to rehabilitate the roads that are dead, upgrade and tarmac the roads that are gravel as well in that process. So now, for the roads that you are supposed, where you have signed the contracts, yeah. and, and maybe the contractors is looking for equipment and mobilizing other things like that, why can't they at the moment be maintaining those roads? They're maintaining those roads. They are not, the, sir. The problem is that you're looking, you, you think the targeted roads under the contracts represent the entire city. No. <laughs> These are just 70 kilometers out of the 650 kilometers. But, but so it's just a small sample. But, but you see, Patrick, the, the, the questions, in, in, in fact, maybe I, I don't mm. even think that David has capacity to answer these questions. Because you see, the questions are, how did we come to this point? Ugandans like discussing contracts, David. Mm. Every time you say this problem, they say we've signed an agreement with the World Bank. You say, but how did we get to this point? Before we came in here, I was, I was uh, chatting with David, and oh, I was like, okay, so as I, on, in this hotel, as you drive from this gate here, you, you, you hit a pothole inside the hotel. <laughs> now, do you need a World Bank loan to fix a, hot, a pothole in a hotel? So, I think that the, the is, we have a political problem, we have a civic problem. I still don't understand how Ugandans, these city dwellers in Kampara, how we are able to struggle in this kind of road network. And we are allowing if these politicians who are supposed to allocate money, we are allowing them to sleep. The other day when I was, dis I was uh, discussing with someone at Kampara parents, those who pass around Kampara parents, eh? You know, there are potholes there. It's like a sea of potholes. Went to drive there. And then I was like, but Kampara Parents is a multi-billion school facility. 
why at the very least why can't they just grade the place so that it's motorable ah someone said no you know kcca people will arrest you <laughs> if you walk on the road and i'm like but sure uh, this this is that you would that you would be a point of protest you as kampara parents who pay taxes every other time that would be a time of protest where you just go chifuba and walk on that road because i think that would be a good reason for KCC to arrest you and put you in prison. I mean, if you can't be in prison for working on a road where you want, you want to drive a, on a good road, what it is should take you to prison? You, you want to go to prison for stealing? So I would want to work on the road and Kampala KCC case, comes and arrests me the and pain, puts me in jail. Just, the, just think about that. The pain is that cities mm. in this region yeah. are positioning themselves mm. To get money through meetings, conferences, and events. Yes. You know, Nairobi and yeah. Kigali. Yeah. Uh, before we know it, even Juba is going to overtake us. <laughs> because if they are serious on their roads, mm. you are going to be hosting a very serious mm. uh, conference, I think, next year, the Non Aligned Movement. Mm. Yeah. It's December this year. December this year. Yeah. This is the, the second to the United Nations, yeah. the biggest meeting mm. that Uganda has ever held, yeah. the Non Allied. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you cannot dazzle the world, uh, Uganda, I think you, we are very lucky people. So there are things that happen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we live by accident. <laughs> we live by because you wonder even how oh, we win man. such yeah. a big conference mm. closer to the United Nations. Mm. Coming to Kampala this December, but engineer Luyimba is saying minimum we can fix them in two, three years. Uh, if you cannot at least dazzle the guests mm. yeah. and the visitors, make a charm offensive to the world, then really. I don't know what, because events like these sometimes leave the ch cities changed. The truth is that we have challenges, that's the truth. We have resource ch challenges, and it cuts across the board. It's not only in Kampala. Uh, mm. All other ministries yeah. are being challenged. Mm. Uh, again, because the resource envelope of the government, uh, uh, Uganda Revenue Authority collects, is limited. After COVID, uh, then the Ukraine war, there were many economic hits that affected the resource collection. I mean, what you're asking of me is like, if you cannot afford bread, half cake. <laughs> we need to be working together. How do we... No, 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 no because you know what I'm actually asking is that yeah. I, I had listened to Godbert's submission. He says, this country and this economy is, is not so broke to no. fail to get money to fix the potholes of Kampala. Of Kampala? Of Kampala? We are not, we have, we're not that bad, mm. engineer. We have not reached that level. And, and, and David knows, of course, for him, he's a technical person. He can't say what I'm saying. David knows that according to our budget right now, the state house burns at least 700 million shillings per day. That's almost a billion per day. Yes, per day. Now, I, I didn't know that. No, so now I'm, <laughs> now I'm informing you. That's what I'm saying, that we have the money. Mm. We are only using it to do the wrong things. Because, you see... There is nothing that happen, that State House does that requires you to burn 700 million shillings per day. If you look at the budget allocation, and then you cannot find money to fix the capital city of the country. And you know these characters, they are very strange, eh? because they will come and start telling you, you need to be patriotic. Now, if you are there, and you are a leader, you are a president, you are members of parliament, and you have no, you have no heart, you have no passion to fix the capital city of a nation. You tell people to be patriots to do what? Then others, you ship them to Changwans. You spend money in Changwans teaching people to be patriotic and you can't fix your capital city. But, but, God, but let's yeah. face it. If the city, in terms of political dividends, yeah. is not giving back to the party that is in power, yeah, yeah, but are, see, are they going to be in a hurry no, to fix a place? You know, no, but, you see, yeah, but at, the the end the day, at, the, at the end of the day, it's about the power re retention and yeah, continuity. Yeah, but you see, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the proposition that by fixing the capital city that you cannot do your politics. Because I think there are certain priorities that you want to be able to do. It, you know, the way... The sometimes way we, it's about give the and way take. We find, the way we fund national security, you, you will put money for national security because that's extremely important. You will still do your politics. You can fund the, uh, a smart city, your capital city, and still do your politics. There are so many things you can actually ignore and be able to find those priorities that make you proud as a nation. So having a capital city that is organized, 
that is clean, that is smart, that gives citizens, you know, the pride. Is, is that for me, that's non-negotiable. Because there are so many things that you can ignore. How much money do we spend on our parliament? I mean, you spend money on 529 MPs to come and get locked in a, a capital city. I, I, I still don't understand. That's why I'm saying that this is a political problem. Kampara City, you have like, what two ministers, eh? Well, I'll stick to the technical issues. The yeah. politics, I may not be able to navigate. <laughs> 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 the capacity, I think, has like two ministers. You ask yourself, what, do they, what are they for? They, they are for doing what? Uh, so, <laughs> I, I think that you have a political problem, and secondly, you have a civic problem, because if Ugandans, if Kampa, residents of Kampara, you and me, Patrick and David, eh, if we are serious people, nobody would accept the kind of situation that we are in. Nobody. I think that I don't think that there are many countries where a people would allow, accept to drive in these roads. So the mere fact that we are incapable of taking on the politicians to say you can't make our city look like this. By the way, I would even say that even all the people of Uganda they should be coming to Kampar to ask why should we have a capital city that looks like this? Because then the politicians would begin to would listen. And David would have the money, by the way. And that's why I'm saying that my view is that uh, in this, even in this discussion, David and Tim and my friend Dorothy, they don't have much they can do. In fact, that's why I sympathize with them, because these are technical people. They need the tools to do the work. So they don't have so, the tools. So let me, uh, well, uh, you, you talked about you have half of the money to collect the garbage. No, we can only collect half of the garbage. Yeah. yeah, you can only, so the other yeah. the other half of the garbage is for Karoli yeah, Marabu stock. With my concern. For, for the Karoli birds to <laughs> play around with. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a serious matter. It I is. Mean, it is because, <coughs> because it is a health issue. Yeah. It can cause us trouble. Yeah. Yeah, but a human being mm. produces garbage every day. Mm. But Number you can only take away half of that garbage. Yeah, the city needs resources. That's what, I'm, but that's, that's what I have to say. Everything we have to do requires resources. Mm. So, so the other half of the garbage, where is it going? Mm, either it is dumped in wrong places, mm. it, uh, it finds its, uh, its way into our stormwater yes, drains. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when that's why you see uh, when it rains, uh, yeah. it floods, because it floods. the stormwater drains, people have dumped that garbage in those drains. And uh, of course now, the floods destroy the roads. The roads get potholed, get damaged. It's this a vicious cycle. Mm. So. The garbage clogs the drains. The drains <laughs> that are clogged create the flooding. The flooding, the flooding de destroys, destroys the roads. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's a circle. I mean, yeah. but mm. again, without resources, you cannot fix these things. You yeah. cannot, you cannot fix these things. But of course, I mean, I'm not saying that we resigned the efforts in place to try and mobilize resources, but the process takes time. As I told you, we're mobilizing money under the World Bank. So, 70% sure. <laughs> or thereabout of Uganda's economy is actually generated in Kampala and Wakiso area. Mm. This is where the action happens. Yeah. So, sure. the biggest chunk. Why can't at least government put money mm. where money is being generated? Do you want David to answer that question? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he, can't <laughs> he can't answer that question. Because, that's because he keeps on saying there's no money. And yet, all the monies of Uganda, at least 60% or slightly more than 60%, is generated here. Yeah. Okay. The little that we have is generated here. You've asked me the difficult question. Why are we in this situation? The, situation where, the reason we're in this situation is because resources are limited. And uh, it's not that government no, is not trying, but the entire revenue collection system is constrained at the moment. And it, it has impacted all sectors at the same time. Kampala is not collecting revenue? Kampala is collecting, but we collect about only 100 billion, 100 billion every financial year. No, th no, that is for cases here. Yes. I was yeah, but you see the, the, you see the, and by the way, David, let me put it this way. Mm. I think part of the problem, let's also look at the governance aspect. Mm. The idea that KCC has to be the ones which has to do roads and finance them is still a wrong idea. This is a capital city. Government of Uganda should be financing roads, uh, should be financing the operations in the city. If, for example, KCCA had limitations with the financial 
whether uh, technical or otherwise. This is the point where you would be directing the UNRWA to deploy some of its resources in cases here. You, I mean, you can't, you can't ask UNRWA to go to somewhere in Ntungamo to do work on a road and this capital city is closed. Now, a road in Ntungamo is very important, as uh, important for the economy, for the movement of people. A road in Karamoja is important. But I don't think that in terms of priorities, you are going to go and do a first class road in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Karamoja where probably maybe no more than 100 vehicles pass in a day. Now I know why you're not a politician, Godbert. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because you see, yeah, because you see if, 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 if being a politician if, is to speak the if, truth, is if, if Ndungam and Karamoja are yeah. going to bring the windfall of votes. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but if, if being a politician... And Kampala is, is denying me. Patrick, <laughs> if being a politician is to tell lies, then not all of us have to be politicians because some of us have no capacity to tell lies. And that's why I'm saying that we need to be able to... Uh, I, I really want to challenge... The, the president, I want to challenge the cabinet. They are the ones who can make the decision and say, Kampara must be fixed. And they give David and the team the resources that are needed. Because it's an embarrassment. It's a shame that as a country, you can have a city like we have today. Okay, so how about the degree of impunity that we see on our roads every day? Also, KCC and other enforcement officers cannot deal with that because we are having a gridlock, bumper to bumper <laughs> traffic, but the minister this and MP the other because you have a siren, you're driving on the wrong side. So even the border border learn from you, they do the same. Mm -hmm. the, the, the traffic man on the, on, the, on the road, he's overwhelmed with the numbers of people who are, are, are disregarding the law. It's an anarchy in downtown. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, traffic enfor enforcement is the duty of police, but again, also, us as KC have a duty to play, have a role to play. And uh, of recent, we've been trying to streamline the border border operations, managing the numbers. Where? By giving them jackets. Oh. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, not, 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 not giving them jackets. Mm. We're, exactly are we're gazetting limited stages in the city. Right now, I think we have over 700 stages in the city. We're going to gazette about 445 stages. Stages should not be in front of banks, near junctions in front of businesses. <laughs> you know, right now, the current arrangement, yeah. stages are everywhere. Now, so we are gazetting the stages, so border borders operate from areas where they don't disrupt other activities of, 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 of Kampala. The other thing we're going to do, we're going to register them. Register them, that means limiting the number of... But are they not registered? They're not. But they have number plates. No one... Da no, yeah. they're not... They to, be, to, register to be registered, you need to be assigned to a stage. We need to know the vehicle, you the, the, the motorcycle you're driving. We need, we need to know that you have a, a driving permit. You must have uh, a PSB license. There are many requirements you should be able to fulfill. But how are they not so registered? So they, they are paying for yeah, licenses I, and yeah, all these things. They are not paying. Yeah. They're not the paying. license? Yeah. They are not paying PSB licenses, as far as I'm aware. The last time we did a census, about only 3% of them had PSB licenses. But About three percent again had driving don't they, don't they register their motorcycles? But they, they need to be registered by an authority. They can't register themselves. Currently, yes, the, the they informally registering themselves. But we need to register them, gazette them, and give them an operating permit that permits them to carry passengers. In the, the deputy city. executive director is telling you that th only three percent even have driving uh, r licenses. True. But now, but in other words, we're having people who mm. are not even aware, and they're probably they're the biggest, you know sector in the transport industry in Kampala. But, yeah. also, but we have people who Probably are not certified to be riding with motorcycles. Only 3% are certified. That is correct. So you can imagine the, the, how you're endangering the lives of the people of Uganda. You know, sometimes you assign blame to KCC, but we also have a duty as a public to ensure we don't break the law. Why buy border border when you, you're not authorized to drive on the road and you can't drive? <laughs> no, David, the society doesn't work that way. No, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... so so the, uh, in, uh, in my classes, I normally teach people, because I, I teach environmental law. Mm. The, my students normally ask me, why is KCCA not protecting wetlands? Why are forests being cut? So I, I normally teach my students. I tell them, I say, in society, there, is, there are three levels of how they comply with uh, how they, they live. The, f the first level is that you, you assume that human beings are rational beings. 
So they want to do stupid things. That's the starting point. Eh? Now, when they, are, when they, are, they have ceased to be rational, mm. you think that society is moral and ethical. So people are moral, they are ethical, so they, they will not do silly things because they are ethical. In, in, in fact, when the morals and ethics are breaking down, you are relying on the churches and the traditional institutions and the opinion leaders to, you know, to inculcate those morals and ethics. When they fail, when that lev that, that second, the second level fail, that is where you go to the level of law enforcement and compliance. That's where you need the state. Now the state comes in and says you have to behave in a certain way. Now, the challenge that we are having right now in Uganda is that the state is also absent. The state is only around when they are doing all kinds of strange things. Eh? But the, the presence of the state to say, ah, border borders, you have to behave. You guys, the motorists, you have to behave. You this, that is now part of the problem. And it is not a KCCA problem. It is the state of Uganda, the, the entire infrastructure of the state that is basically absent now, so we are a society that has degenerated into lawlessness. And that's what we are reaping right now. So that's why I'm saying that the, some of these issues are really beyond KCC. And I okay. think you also <coughs> mentioned it, David. There are, there are many issues that are beyond KCC. And they have to be fixed at a certain level. And that level is not functional. That level is the level of president, the level of cabinet, the level of members of parliament okay. who okay. have the political muscle to order direct certain things. Good work and engineer yeah. Limbas. Gentlemen, hold on your points because mm. we're going to take a break. And you know what Goodba just said? If this was a human body, it's like yeah. we're about to suffer mm. multiple organ failure. We'll be right back. Mm. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are Mr. Godba Tumushabe, Associate Director at Great Lakes Institute for Strategic Studies. He's also a policy analyst and engineer David Luyimbazi, who is Deputy Executive Director of KCCA. And we're looking to the state of the roads in Kampala. You know, on top of having bad roads, we also deserve, you know, an efficient public transport system for heaven's sake. At least if we had the buses, you know, or whatever it could. Probably that would where, have helped where you. Would, where would they pass? Well, the <coughs> soldier only in our potholes looks <laughs> like we're... <laughs> okay. Okay. So, well. where's the... You, you have such a amazing plans mm. in mm. your cabins there at KCC. Some of them, you found them there. In fact, mm. your predecessors were talking about even giving us cable cars and all this <laughs> kind of stuff. You guys can dream. But, <laughs> but the problem is... It only stays at that, I mean, you know. Uh, artistic well. impressions are, <laughs> are, are absolutely amazing. I don't know. You're being sarcastic. <laughs> you're being sarcastic. But uh, I mean, I'm but the issues are real. I mean, public transport. What are we doing? Uh, of course, there were many ideas we found on the table, mm. the, like the bus rapid transit. But as you know, there's no space yeah. for buying mm. buying space for roads mm. in the city. Mm. So right now, we've uh, signed an MOU with a South African company to do a feasibility study for implementing what we're calling an elevated light rail. So you have this light rail running on pillars mm. in the air. That's the only way you can deal with the issue of mm. lack of space. Uh, I, I, I'm sure you have that uh, feasibility study. No, 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 it's not there. The light rail feasibility study that we had was an online system. Mm. The elevated one we didn't have. I want to put it in there. Yeah, I, I mean, th that's I, don't think I don't think that you have a choice. The dream is becoming bigger. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only logical way you can deal with the, the issue of The dream is space. going bigger. Yeah. <laughs> You're dreaming big. In it's not a dream. <laughs> you yeah. know why? Because... There are so many feasibility but, but, studies. But, so but actually, you had a, an Israeli and a South African yeah. company yes. come and give a Kampala master plan. No, I, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, uh, Patrick, eh? mm? I'm wondering, David, yeah. if, you, if we can't find money to mm. fix these roads, you think we will find money to build elevated light rail? No, that mm. one's going to be a public private partnership mm. where you have an investor coming to invest his money, he recoups it through collections. Again, that's a way to try and deal with the issue of lack of resources. Have the private sector come in, invest in infrastructure, have a concession of 25 years or 40 years to recover its investment. I, I want to give you an idea, David. Yeah. That uh, 
you find a way. Get get uh, use your infrastructure as guess this year. Mm. You get uh, people within Kampala with the dwellers, you know, in the different reformations. Engage us in some baraza kind of arrangement, maybe on maybe on a monthly or quarterly basis. Find some space where we can sit with you, and with the Dorothy, with you and your team, and talk about how do we change this city. Yeah, yeah that's a very yeah. welcome idea. How do we change this city? Mm. Let let Ugandans, let Kamparans change Kampala. Change Kampala. I, I don't think True. it can work. You, because you're going yeah. to meet people who mm. are angry and emotionally <laughs> judged. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, they, they can, no, no, you, you, actually, this, this is something that you can, you can have them selectively. Because in all the other sectors of government where, where, where I engage with government agencies, there are people that you, ca you bring together because they have vested interests and they, you know, they bring knowledge, they bring ideas, some of them can bring resources. So I, I really want to, I would want to see like a baraza of the, the, chi the executive director, uh, or if the mayor was able to do it and be able to sit and say, guys, this is the challenge we are facing. In your view, how do you think we overcome it? Because I think the being there in city hall, I think this thing can be overwhelming. Yeah, but you, uh, yeah. You, are, you are assuming that yeah. perhaps the people who are running the affairs mm. do not know, do not want, or, no, or, they, or they don't get it. No. Because, uh, because I'm sure they get it. No, they get it. Uh, Engineer uh, they, gets it. I am thinking now. The problem is telling you are the resources. No, I'm thinking of how do you now solve the problem? If we brought, uh, if, you br if you brought some 50 uh, business people mm. in Kampara, uh, you brought some, a, a couple of others in terms of their segments and sat down with them in a, in a, in a, a town hall and say, you give us ideas. How do we overcome the current stalemate, the current challenge? Because it, this is a crisis. This crisis of Kampara is not a crisis of KCC alone. It's a crisis of all of us. So, uh, so my proposal is to figure out how do you mobilize the different segments of Kamparans to say, let's have a conversation of how do we overcome this challenge? Yeah, b because you see, we have, uh, for coming from my profession as a, as a policy analyst, normally when we are looking at problems, you have to begin to understand what is the problem. Is it a financial problem? There is a time when we worked in the environment sector and we, we used to write all the consultancy reports we wrote. We said there is no money. The environment sector is underfunded. When we did the analysis of the budgets, we actually found that there is a lot of money, but the problem was more to do with the institutions that are overlapping. So it was actually never a financial problem. So you, so you have to, in, in, in terms of addressing the current problem in Kampala, you have to find out, is this a policy problem? If it's a policy problem, where is the problem? Is it a political problem? If it is political, where, what is its manifestations? Is it a budget problem? If it's a budget problem, because you see, that's, this is one thing I, I used to argue with the people in the environment sector. But if you are saying that our forests are being degraded, our wetlands are being degraded because of money, and you think it is important, then this is the point where you go, as you're saying, go to the World Bank, borrow money, sort the problem. Don't keep on writing year, year in, year out, year in, year out, and say that the environment of Uganda is being degraded because we have no money. Because we, even at the household level, even at your individual level, Patrick, when you have no money, you know the options that are available to be able to look for the money. If you don't look for the money and find it, then you begin to say, why am I not able to find the money? Maybe I'm not credit worthy. Maybe I don't have friends who are rich. Then you begin to solve the problem. Somehow but, you find yeah. the money even when you're constrained. Yeah. So, <laughs> because, so that's, so that's so my point. Somehow you find so the, the money. A, a conversation, I think, that you broaden and bring people. It, you know, because I, I can see you guys, you are really, you are really in, a, in a crisis. Bring people and see uh, how do we extract ideas on how we get this thing done. So um, you had a very beautiful idea of, of building what they call the non-motorized transport corridor. Yep. I see it in Namirembe Road. Sometimes I go and park at Lohana Primary and I go downtown. But what has happened that the thing, <laughs> the, a beautiful <laughs> idea has been misused and abused left, right and center under your watch. 
Mm. Why did you have it if you cannot, imp you know? Why? I mean, they're driving on the pavement, they're, they're, they're put, or the flower yeah. pots are gone, yes, and, and gone. you know, and, 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 the, and the border borders are, are moving. There are some lanes that are meant for only people with disabilities, mm. PWDs. Yeah. That's where the border borders are going. Yeah. There are some lanes mm. people are supposed to walk. People will be, you know, they will be honing so that you can get away. And I'm like, this is supposed to be a good initiative. In fact, it's a beautiful initiative. But you cannot even, you cannot even let it work as it's meant to be. As painful as it is to you, it pains mm. us ten times more. Uh, mm. you know, like, this is very interesting. <laughs> when, when the, the, the ED <laughs> of <laughs> KCC oh, yes. is agonizing just like us. I'm yeah. expecting him to organize the city, but he's no, also crying like the, us. The thing is, one. But, but the, everybody organizes it, in this country. It, it's a process to organize the border borders so they can operate from gazetted places. It's not something you do in one stroke. We began off with the sensitize. Okay, first did the census, began off with sensitization did the training, now we're going to gazetting stages and registering. It's a process. And that process is supposed to lead, lead up to the cleaning up of the non-motorized tra transport corridor. So it's not something that can happen in one stroke without you losing it at the same time. So we agonize with these things and many other things you don't know. No, it is, it, I think you, KCCA and the police, mm -hmm. all they needed was to enforce. You know, when you said no border border on, on the Entebbe Express, they're not there. But they were never there in the first place. No, because in the first place you said they will not. This is not for you. No, and they listen. No, the, by the, the road, the, <laughs> the road, the Entebbe Expressway is built in such a way that if you are border border, you take a passenger away, will you drop the passenger? But even uh, where, where? you cannot yeah, even yeah, walk yeah, on the expressway. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot walk. You cannot drive a bicycle. You cannot do a border border. Mm. Those are forbidden activities on the expressway. Mm. So there is a gate and, to and enter. And in any and case, you will not pass mm. the via the the toll gate. Where will you pass? With the NMT corridor, <laughs> you have no gates. So, even right now, as we speak, we have border borders lined but, up. But I think, I think, David, you don't mm. need to be at this point. Mm. That as long as we cannot organize, uh, we, we don't have law and order in the city. In law the abiding, country. law abiding people. Uh -uh, no, it's, mm. you see, you see, it's never the case that you, you have law abiding people. That's why I told you that you reach a point where the state has to, coerce. Has to effectively occupy the space and, and do certain things that a state does. So, uh, when but, the but, state but, but I just want you to explain this. In your view, what yeah. is likely to happen yeah. when we have this high degree of impunity, yeah. when you have this city that's not working, mm. the roads are broken down, yeah. everybody seems to be doing their thing. Yeah. Where are we headed, in your view? What is next? You see... <laughs> <laughs> so what is going to come out of this? Yeah, what is... Uh, I, I remember one time when I, I traveled to Cameroon, uh, and I was shocked that in Cameroon, for you to enter the shops, mm. the way you have on Kampara Road, you have to go through kiosks. Mm -hmm. So people had come and established kiosks on the verandas, so you would pass through the kiosks and go to the shops. That's basically a breakdown of law and order. In, uh, when, I, when I worked in Kenya, uh, uh, towards the end of the Moi regime, Nairobi was almost degenerating to the level of Kampala, but I don't think it ever reached Kampala. But it's so, it degenerated so much that w uh, w there is a point where uh, people who were selling, uh, you know, these uh, vegetables, cabbages, whatever, so they were <laughs> selling, they were at the veranda of the Hilton. Wow. Yes. That's basically what was happening. So w when you don't, when you don't, as, as a government, if you don't create law and order, these things will continue degenerating. And you see, when you have uh, a, a, a civic incompetent society, because we are a civic incompetent society, the, what what the what the current regime has done? Are you challenging us, or you just no, abusing, I am are you abusing us? No, <laughs> I am challenging us. We are a civic incompetent society because you see, there is no way a civic competent population could let this happen. Can let this happen? The the you, you know, David, they may not know this. Some of, each one of us who has small businesses here and there. If you imagine the, the level of harassment 
by you, you are a A. Huh? Taxes, this tax, mm. this one, takes the other one. And then you, you part with some of this money and it goes. And then you still wake up in the morning and don't go on these roads. N a, a civic competent society would not accept this. Okay, let, let me ask yeah? Engineer Luyimbazi maybe to give us hope. Mm. Uh, for the money, the contracts that have been signed, uh, where are things likely to get better very soon? Which roads are you? Are we going to see earth movers uh, working? Mm, and, okay. and, and, and I know the political leaders are saying the exorbitant price is also giving them a headache. That, <laughs> that a kilometer at, at 10 billion, <laughs> is it 10 or 15 billion? How do you justify that? <laughs> Go for it. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, the roads we're going to work on include Port Bay Road, Spring Road. We have 8th Street, 5th Street, 6th Street, 7th Street, Sapolo, Kagua Road. We have Chive Blair Junction, Bulange Junction, Kayemba Road. Mutesa One Road, Old Movende Road, Luwafu Road, Wamala Road, Muzito Road, Suna Road, Suna One, Kabalagala Junction, Chebadoring Road, Chisasi Two Road, and a number of other, other, other roads. Mm -hmm. But you'll note that we have about over 500 sections of roads in the city. These are just about 21 we're dealing with. So that, that's why I'm, I'm not trying to put your hopes up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we doing just a part of the but dealing but with part of the problem. So, so this, this Port Bell and, and, and you know, and Namongo and whatever mm -hmm. roads, you signed the contracts in November, we're now about to enter <coughs> April. Is the contractor still mobilizing? No, the contractors, so contractors have established on site. They have uh, imported the equipment. They're beginning to identify sources of material and they're doing forward maintenance on these roads. In about three, four months, you begin seeing the deep but work uh, but of... Uh, David. Yes. For the for the CBD, for example, the because there are some of these areas like uh, you know, if you think of uh, Katwe, mm -hmm. you think of uh, Kamwacha, mm. uh, you think of uh, Ntinda. Mm. Uh, I, I'm just wondering how much money would we need to do even a radius of five kilometers of Kampara or of ten kilometers. Do we have an estimation of like, ah, if we went somewhere and borrowed this money, mm. we could get this problem sorted? Because I don't even believe with this approach. Oh, we yes. have borrowed 600 million from the World Bank. We'll do the other world and the other one. And then, uh, the incidentally, you have a public relations uh, problem. Mm. Because the, the one who, which is uh, Sixth Street, eh? mm. me, I go to the other direction. The road will be uh, a, a, a multiple X. Mm. So you will even not tell me that we signed the contract with the World Bank and we have fixed the road in Seventh Street. We will not be here. We will, we will not be hearing you. Yeah. You get the problem. Mm -hmm. So I think that the, the the strategy to work on these roads must be: we need money to fix a network of roads that probably as you move out of town. And and I think that uh, no, but actually. For the capital city of Uganda, d we must find the money. And I think that's why you, uh, mm. the comparators need to be mobilized. If need be, mm. maybe we should even contribute money. <laughs> now, to be honest, there is no way mm. as Ugandans we can live in this capital city. It's just not possible. Okay, thank you for your contribution. But what I, what I can say is this. Eh? Uh, Kampala's problems are not limited to roads alone. As I told you, we have drainage, we have... Uh, which causes flooding, we have garbage, we have street lighting, we have, we have markets. Now what do we have? We have a strategic plan, as case a five-year strategic plan. That strategic plan is supposed to, the required funding is about 1.4 trillion per year to be able to deal with all the various aspects. Per year? Per year, over okay. a five-year period. And 1.4 trillion, uh, you then we can begin to see a turnaround, <laughs> is that? A turnaround of yeah. the city. Hmm. But right now, as I explained, we get about only 220 billion of that. So you find that many times you, you, you just have to massage the you problem. You need 1.4. 1 1.4 1 trillion every year. You get 200, about 200. You know, 220. You, I, you know, when you drive, for example, on Kampala Road, mm. Kampala Road should be like the main, our main street, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And if you go there right now, mm. the street is in darkness. Mm. And you know, people are crisscrossing mm. and all that. Yeah. You're driving, mm -hmm. it's dark. Yeah, I know you tried to put some light you these the solar <laughs> things. Yeah. One of them is flickering, the other one died long ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I said. Oh the, the problems of Kampala are not just the roads alone. It is, 
it's an ecosystem mm. of services that this are required. Is, this is a sick man of yeah. Europe. I'm, I don't want to call him a sick man. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> a man who has problems, he has problems. Yeah. There, are, there is help on the way, but of course, it requires some time. Mm. Okay, mm. because now to mobilize the 1.4 trillion isn't something you can do mm. like tomorrow. Mm. Okay. To do what? Mm. 1.4 trillion for the city. Shillings. One point. Oh, yes. Unless you're saying dollars. No, no, no. 1.4 no, trillion. No, 1.4 trillion. Let me tell you. So our budget. Mm is 48 trillion about there hmm? mm. a serious government must find 1.4 trillion and organize this out of 44 trillion out of 40 out of 48 trillion and and i think even the policy makers know that this city the metropolitan area of this city is what generates money because i'm i'm pretty sure even even with simple business understanding I believe that anybody knows that by investing 1.4 trillion and making people and goods and services move in this town, you probably could generate even more money. Okay. Gentlemen, hold on to your points because we are going to take a break. We come back with our last segment of the show and I'll be opening uh, the lines or you're sending your comments or questions on our WhatsApp number so that I can read those questions or comments to my guests this evening and I'll be able to respond. I know sometimes you can be angry, which is okay, but please, if you're going to respond, don't respond with anger. <laughs> we need some civility. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are engineer David Luyimbazi, Deputy Executive Director of KCCA, and Mr. Godbert Mushabe, uh, Policy Analyst and Associate Director at the Great Lakes Institute for Strategic Studies. Um, this is the moment when you have to have to say, to have your say. You can send your questions or comments on our WhatsApp number, which you're going to see on the screen. But in the meantime, there are those who have reached me already, and uh, somebody is asking, engineer, that uh, the deputy ED should update us on the decongestion program in which KCCA gazetted three parks to lift the traffic burden from the city roads. Did the program die? Gazetted three parks? Which parks are those? But did you have any uh, plan to decongest the city? Oh, yes. We plan to have uh, peripheral taxi parks yeah, on the yes. outskirts I of think the those city. are the ones, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, they haven't yet been gazetted because mo the developers have to invest in developing those parks as terminals before they are gazetted properly. I, but their plans have been approved. <coughs> All I know, their plans have been um, approved. How many terminals are we talking about? Mm, there's one on You're Jinja. supposed to have one in Bunatete, one in Banda, yeah. and Waise, right? Yes, and one in Waise. In fact, I'm visiting the one in Waise on Sunday. They're having some technical challenges regarding getting the approvals done. The one in Natete is approved as far as i know and the one in band is also approved so do they, do they have time frames um because they're private investments you cannot give them strict timelines because it depends should they are they planning to borrow money mm. uh, do they have their own capital so and again it depends on how they're organizing their, their financing mm. yeah so it's a private investment, so you, you don't control uh, how quickly or how the, fast. There's a young lady who s said, uh, you know, Patrick, I was born in an elite, now rotten community. Road is two and in Munyonyo and Muyenga are rotten. Yeah. They have ruined my beloved patrol. But why and how is something, why, why is this not a, a, a explained? I pay my taxes. You know, these are just words somebody has texted, but I can even feel the pain mm, in the yeah, heart. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it. But I have... <laughs> I don't know how many times I should tell you. <laughs> yes. Without resources, yes. there is a limit to what you can do. Yeah. Without resources, mm, mm. I cannot turn around the city. Yeah. Wow. Okay, you can keep those uh, comments and, and questions coming in, and then maybe Jinia uh, Luhimbaz will be able to respond to them. Um, mm. But the, there are clearly the, things the, that you can be the, able to do. The beauty is that there is hope. There is hope. Hope is on the way. Although it takes time. Okay? It's going to take some time. You, if we're mobilizing yeah. external resources. You, you say, David. David. Yes. You, you are not a clergy man. <laughs> mm. hmm? You are not a clergy man. To preach hope. Uh, because you see, the, for, the, for, the, for the Christians, Jesus is coming back anytime. 
So there's hope. He's actually been coming for the last yeah, two, yes, two he has been coming. So, in other words, for the city, mm. especially for this city, you don't have to feed people on hope. Uh, right now, you've already explained that this is the budget situation of KCCA. And, you, and and I think you are you are talking about the KCC, not the, the not the greater no, KCC. not the greater Kampara. Yeah, absolutely. Because you see, when you uh, for me who takes the direction of Ntina uh, after uh, after Chiwature, mm. you have joined Wakiso. from Chiwature to Najera to Chira to Wulindo. Your auto All collapsed. those roads have collapsed. Mm. So your clients are in Wakiso. Our dormitory. Yeah, you are dormitory. Mm. So, in other words, I, I think, uh, and you know, I, I always, uh, I keep on telling you, I said, Africans, we are too lenient with our, ourselves. Even when we are failing, we try to find reasons to we are succeeding. Me, me, I think that we need to be brutally honest with ourselves eh? and say, this thing is not working. So, how do we, how do we, uh, we need to inflict pain on ourselves. Shock, be able to shock yeah, therapy. Uh, shock therapy. <laughs> Turn it around, eh? uh, yeah, we need to be able to uh, to to do shock therapy and be able to move. So that's why I think um, that's what I'm thinking. If uh, if KCC realizes that yeah, this is a real problem. We don't have money. You look at your budget. If you look at the last five year budget, you see the thing has not changed. You look at the projections for the next three years. You don't see a change. Then I think as the as the leadership of the city, then you have to be able to think more uh, more aggressive in terms of what else do we need to do, and that's why I'm saying I think we, we we should find a mechanism of making sure that we mobilize Kamparans to think about the future of this city. By the way, even if you had the money, I think I would now now I'm convinced that Kamparans need to be seated with you every time and again. Mm -hmm. Say let's think about the future of this city because uh, no, we should do it for our country. Absolutely. Yeah, we should do it for our country. Yeah. I'm, uh, be, I'll be picking your questions or comments uh, on, on this magic wall of mine so that you can send them right now. And please, uh, as you bring them, make sure they are, they are not uh, attacking the, the ED. Does our head of state enjoy the state of Kampala? What is Parliament doing about the roads? Of embarrassing Kampala. Can Kampala citizens rise up to demonstrate peacefully about Kampala roads? Charles Sengendo there. And you know, and uh, thank you, Mr. Kamara, for bringing us the two gentlemen. I'd like to know why KCCA was hiding contracts from the people's representatives, Anthony in Entebbe. Um, hello, Patrick. I am Sam watching online from Kigali, Rwanda. I enjoy the word of words between those two gentlemen in the studio. As a Ugandan living next door, it's really embarrassing sometimes. It's very difficult to defend our country in the eyes mm -hmm. of our neighbors. We deserve better. Uh, and I'm Wilson from Umbarara. I am wondering how can KCCA, technical team, work alone excluding people representatives? I have seen the mayor and councillors complaining that they refuse to account for resources and refusal to participate in council meetings. Maybe, uh, Engineer Yibazil, if you, before, could you go for the issue of politics, uh, elected leaders and people like you to be in perpetual conflict? <laughs> 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 We're not in perpetual conflict. Actually, there's been a lot of peace for quite a while. Mm. It's only after these contracts were signed off, uh, this $288 million project, that conflicts began to emerge <laughs> and of course the issue was uh, they wanted to access the contracts and as civil servants we had to seek guidance from the solicitor general who guided recently that we can share these contracts with the political wing and we promptly shared these contracts with them as we had promised them that once we get advice from the solicitor general we shall share these contracts or not depending on that guidance okay uh, let me pick the three more questions and probably comments and then you can respond to them NTV on the spot. It's difficult to solve the prevailing challenges in Kampala as the city is holding more activities than it's meant to. Government must seriously embrace the idea of shifting the capital city to another area altogether. Kampala city is overstretched. The population far outstrips its capacity. Some of the critical services ought to be shifted to the metropolitan areas. 
Kampala roads need prayers. I don't know <laughs> if we really have a functional system in place to take road infrastructure development. Currently, Gulu roads are the best in the whole country. KCCA, to take this seriously because it's part of security and allows for business growth and broader tax revenue. Um, as a country, I think we generally lack goodwill to develop this beautiful country of ours. It is sad. Okay, how do you respond to those uh, uh, engineer? <laughs> Most of these have been comments, but uh, I'd like to acknowledge that, yes, the roads in Kampala are bad. Uh, that's a fact mm. we cannot hide away from. Mm. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, the situation can only be reversed through provision of resources. In the current economic situation of ours, uh, the resources are, we're operating under budget tightening, a budget tightening environment. Okay. And we have limited budgets to be able to turn around the city. But the number of arrangements we have in place that are going to cause the change we desire. But it's going to take time. It's a process. We have efforts from the World Bank. We have issues, efforts from the UK Export Finance. Uh, those will redeem the paved network in the city. But it's, it can't happen tomorrow. It will happen, it will take two to three years to see the change that we need. Is this what uh, Ambassador Laro Tunu called suffering from general <laughs> brokenness? Uh, 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 no, co comprehensive <laughs> brokenness. Comprehensive yeah. brokenness. Yeah. So yeah, gentlemen, our time, our time is out. And mm. What do you make of these uh, uh, submissions from Ugandans who have watched tonight and have responded? I mean, you, you, can, listen, you can hear the passion the questions. I, I think that uh, every Ugandan must be concerned about this capital city because they are, they are things that give you pride as a, as a citizen. You know, g g uh, having a capital city, even if, by the way, even if you have never been there and you are able to see pictures of Kampala and you feel like this is a clean, organized city, it gives you pride as a citizen. Uh, that's where, uh, when, when people talk about patriotism, it's like, oh, this is a city we should defend our, uh, 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 ourselves. And, and I think that's what we need to, that's what you hear from the, from the uh, uh, people who have been making comments. And, and, I, that's what, and I think my last comment is, is really to emphasize the point. I'll say, uh, David and his team at KCCA, the Lord Mayor, I think that they should, uh, they should try and figure out mechanisms to distribute the burden because the burden on, on them is too much. Uh, the, the, the current state of the city demonstrates that they are, in, they are not capable of holding it. You need to find mechanisms of making sure that Kamparans can take charge of the city and be able to make the contribution they can make. I, I really think that... Uh, yeah, people should uh, maybe maybe we should we should find over raising money and finance our city. If the government doesn't want to allocate money, because I I know the way government allocates money, if they chose to allocate money to fix the problems of this city, we would not even go to both because uh, because uh, uh, our, the money that is generated is allocated for so many things. Uh, allocation for making sure that we have a capital city that gives g gives us pride as a people, as a country. For once, they need to super focus priority. on Kampala. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what's going to be your concluding remark, Engineer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to say one thing. Uh, we at City Hall, the technical wing and probably the political wing, we feel the same pain the public feels. That's why we <coughs> dare to prosecute the problem, understand what is it that holds us back. And Right now, the, the current situation is that the resources are holding us back. But I'm sure there's hope, in, hope on the way. We have a number of initiatives we have underway that are going to, they're going to take time, but they're going to arrive and turn around the city. We don't enjoy the potholes in the city. We don't enjoy the flooding in the city. We don't enjoy the garbage disposal methods in the city. And we don't enjoy the lack of lighting in the city. But again, the public also has a lot to do uh, because littering, littering in a, a way that cost the country a lot of money in terms of garbage collection is something that can save us from the from having a bad city or a dirty city. So the public also has a role to play to help us reduce the cost of to the authority to provide the service that are required. I thank you. Got by your parting shot? Yeah, no, Ugandans, we must, uh, we need to take responsibility for our country. I think that we have disengaged too much. Uh, 
because it's all over the country, by the way. As I told you, in Ndungamo, where I, where I come from, the road, that road that uh, I, I pass through all the time. By the way, <laughs> it is the same thing. Uh, at Christmas break, I had guests at home. We, we had uh, uh, a, a function for our parents, and the road was really in bad shape. So I called the chairman of Ntungamo, ROC5 chairman, who is my friend. I said, Sam, uh, give me some road equipment. Me, I'll buy fuel and fix this road. Small that influence pedaling here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because I mean, uh, <laughs> so, so, but I, I, basically I was, I was requesting because you, you had to thought you, you had to buy the fuel. Yeah, I, had, I, I could buy the fuel. And the chairman told me and said, no, you know, that road belongs to UNRWA. So you have to ask for permission from UNRWA. I just said, sure, eh. It's, I, that's why I, 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 I always call it a dysfunction. Because you are the chairman of C5, and you're saying the road belongs to you. And some guys in Kampara, hmm. me, who is here, who is growing my matoke and my coffee and whatever, I have to wait for you from Kampara. And the chairman, so the dysfunction, it's all everywhere. So that's why I believe that uh, we as citizens, we should put more demands on the president. And by the way, we, I, I, I keep on insisting, I say, societies that transform, they are transformed by leaders at the family level, at the community level, in the church, in business. Now, the challenge that where Uganda is now because of the dysfunction that has really uh, eaten deep to the core, you need a patriarchal approach where the man at the top says we are going to change course and he's able to demonstrate that this can be uh, we can change course and i think right uh, right now he i think he has the he has the he has the power if he could find a way of gathering some will he can be able to focus on the campaign and say i cannot be a president of a capital city of a country that has a capital city like Kampala because it's a very embarrassing for not only for us as citizens but for him as a president and I think it would be embarrassing for anybody who is a president at this time to have a country with a capital city in the shape in the form of Kampala. Godba yeah. Tomashabe and engineer David Limbazi. Gentlemen I want to thank you so much for the time you've given us and for you the viewers I want to thank you for the privilege of your company. I believe we have a good country and we're good people. But I also know that we deserve better. Sometimes there's a pleasant surprise in Kampala and Uganda where we are able to attract big meetings to come, including the Chogam, AU, Parliamentary <laughs> Conference, and even this year we're having the Nanalai movement coming to Kampala. How I wish the leaders could do much more. God has placed us in the best part of the world. Can you imagine Kampala on the shores of Africa's largest freshwater lake? Just to do a little bit. And if we just worked on our roads and a few other things, no other city in Africa can even dare to compete with us. Why can't we do it? I think we can. Good night and God bless Uganda.